Welcome back to Atom Paints. Today I'm going to show you that you can easily print out models using auto supports, and we'll be doing just that with this Wolverine model. Many in the 3D printing community here on YouTube will advise you to never use the auto support function, but as someone who has gotten quite good at supporting his models entirely manually, I have found that the auto support function can actually speed up this supporting process drastically. I'm going to assume you already have some understanding of resin printing and supporting models using a slicer, so my focus will be just showing you how I use auto supports to help improve your supporting skills. I'm going to try to support this Wolverine as fast as I can with a mix of manual and auto supporting, and then I will print it out and show you how it turned out. This is sized to a 1 6th scale and I have already oriented the models and hollowed them out. Alright, let's get started. First you want to make sure your settings for your supports aren't anything crazy. Honestly, I just copied the settings given by 3D Printing Pro, his video on his optimal support settings will be in the description. With the exception of the head, these models will be incredibly easy to support. Or so I thought. The legs and torso weren't as simple as others I have done in the past due to the specific details. Keep in mind that the more complex the model is, the greater chances the auto support function will not help you at all. In those instances the auto support may be more time consuming than manual supports, though it can be useful to see where your slicer thinks you need a supports if you're having trouble deciding. Adjusting the auto generated supports is a great way to improve your skills at supporting. Anyway, the auto support function places light, medium, or heavy supports all over your model where it thinks, it is needed. Again, with complex shapes the auto supports may miss critical areas, or over support other areas that don't need it. The most important setting for auto supports is the density. This will affect the actual number of supports that are generated. As you can see a density of 90 means 90% 90 of the area of what the software believes needs supports will be supported. A density of 10 places a quite a small number of supports. This is a handy setting to change depending on the model. For large flat bases that I want to ensure print perfectly I usually have a rather high density, whereas something like this arm does not require this many supports. However, when it comes to areas of a model that will be obscured when put together I don't mind over supporting to ensure a successful print. The bottom of this arm will be mostly covered, which is why I also oriented the model as such. Okay, I'll now show you just how I support a model like this. I will speed through most of the process as this took exactly an hour. Had I done this entirely manually it probably would have taken about the same time, if not a little less just because I am quite good at manual supports but I wanted to demonstrate how to edit auto supports to ensure an optimal print for those of you who aren't as confident in your supporting abilities. As I alluded to earlier there is nothing wrong with over supporting your model when it comes to areas that are either easy to sand and clean or will be hidden. I basically never have print failures from supports using this method. Using the delete tool we can easily clean up supports that are unnecessary. The only times you need a supports is for islands, and occasionally to add stability to the part during the printing process. Unnecessary supports just means more cleanup. Keep in mind that heavy supports will leave harsher support marks once removed than medium or light. You can only auto support one size. Either they will all be light, medium, or heavy. I recommend using heavy if majority of the supports are going to be on a surface you don't care about. As for the many generated heavy supports throughout the rest of the model, I would highly recommend either deleting them or editing them as needed. Personally I like to delete these supports and add them with the minimal amount as well as the proper size. It can be hard to tell why an auto support is right or wrong at first, but you'll develop a sense for this as you practice. The arms were easy but upon moving to the legs I realized I needed to flip the orientation for better supports. Again, to be honest, I might have been able to support this quicker manually as opposed to deleting and editing the generated supports, but I think it might help people see what I'm doing. One thing to consider is that generated supports will often be placed on the edge of a corner, causing the support to bleed out on the side. The supports at the bottom of the hip will be slightly visible on the sides of the hip so be sure to move the supports away from the edge to prevent this. Here I am working on a few islands that were created due to me flipping the model upside down. Also you'll notice that some areas that aren't islands, but definitely are in need of support. Basically, if it is barely connected to the rest of the model it needs supports.
Here you can see a before and after of the generated supports and my edited version. It might be hard to tell but mine is far cleaner and there are quite a few unnecessary groups taken out. Also don't forget to support your supports if needed. Really tall and lonely supports need supports. I am a fairly tall and very lonely support. Consider supporting me by subscribing. The torso is relatively straightforward. The two arms are islands that need to be supported until they join with the rest of the model. So for the torso I decided to switch it up and only use the auto supports as an idea of where to place supports. The auto supports generate at the bottom of the body, arms, and some details around the armpits. This is a fairly accurate if you use it as a general guide where to place supports. So for this one, I will be placing all my supports manually as I noted that I would have to do a lot of editing to fix the auto supports. Other than that the detailing of a model can be tricky to work with. This mesh-like material of his suit doesn't print smoothly and while you don't want to ruin the detail by throwing a bunch of supports you don't want it to fail but ultimately you are going to be losing some detail, it's just the nature of the technology. So this head was a real pain in the butt. Even though it doesn't seem very complex there are a ton of little shapes coming off the model, strands of hair, that all need supports. The auto supports actually did a pretty good job picking up most of these but it did miss a few, proving it's not perfect. Again, once you get a feel for this you'll have a pretty good sense of where to look for islands. But use your arrow keys to view each layer slowly from one angle then change angles. So again all I'm doing is adding auto supports and adjusting the places where supports will be noticed when taken off. I focus on those areas to ensure it comes out smoothly so that I don't have to do much cleanup because cleanup and prep is the worst part of the hobby to me. Delete supports where you don't think they're needed. If you want to change the size of a support you can delete it and replace it or adjust the size using the edit tool. You should become familiar with the edit function if you are not already. I will probably eventually make a more basic beginner's guide to supports if enough people ask for it. Anyway, the supports are finished and this took me exactly an hour to complete. I apologize if it was difficult to see specifics from the time lapse, but if enough people ask, I might post the full real time video. It's quite a bit of time for one model and I could have possibly finished it sooner doing it manually, but I don't have to ever support this specific model again, unless I want to change the size or, of course, if the supports fail. Let's slice the model and print it out to find out if my supports are good enough. The model was sliced, thrown on a flash drive, and here we are at my Frozen Sonic Marty 4K ready to go with Cyratex Fast Resin. Whoa, whoa, we are halfway there. And it looks like it's printing fine. Don't forget to refill on resin as needed. Nothing worse in life than a print failure due to an empty bat. Though I suppose one could argue an inability to manifest one's dreams into reality is a worse thing, but this is a 3D printing channel. After 18 hours, the print is complete. Nitrile gloves are a must when dealing with resin. If you guys don't have a flex plate you are missing out. I'll show you how quickly I can get to printing again. And look at that, everything came out flawlessly. Perhaps that handsome puppet knows what he's talking about. It might be a good idea to subscribe just in case I have other useful videos in the future mmmmm yesh. So the key to easily removing supports with barely any effort is to have good support settings and to warm the supports with hot water, or in my case I dump them in my ultrasonic cleaner filled with mean green.
As you can see, all you have to do with the flex plate now is clean it up. I wipe any excess resin before spraying it with some isopropyl alcohol and thoroughly wiping any residual resin off. I'll give the magnet a quick wipe in case any resin got on there, slap that boy back on in there, and when I'm set to start printing again. And just in case anyone wants to buy this print I'll go ahead and print another one. If you leave resin sitting in the vat it will start to separate and I would recommend pouring it back into the bottle to mix it. I'm not doing that, as you can see. It's only been sitting for a couple hours after the print finished so mixing with my fingers should be good enough. I'll take off the supports now since they should be warm enough. All you need to do is hold onto the base of the supports and pry it off. I'll wiggle it back and forth to gently convince the supports they should let go so they aren't all pissy and leave horrible marks for me to deal with. Twisting it can also help, though be careful as you might snap off something by accident. Just go slow and feel it out. Also if you're having a ridiculously hard time getting them off by hand this way either your heavy supports are too thick or there are too many. I have had this issue before, being that over supportive man that I am. I never use nippers to take off supports. This method does the trick every single time. I'll let these guys finish cleaning before taking them out and washing off the soap with water and alcohol. If they're hollow, make sure to get all the soap out of the inside by shaking water in there until it comes out clear. Once it's clean I throw them in my homemade UV chamber for about 15 minutes. Apparently this is overkill, but it works for me so it's what I do. When I say these came out perfectly, I really mean it. As you saw most of the support marks will be hidden at the joints. The only thing I need to point out is when a support supports itself to the model instead of the plate. Sometimes these are unavoidable and needed to support awkward places. These supports will always leave behind a little mark, but this is an easy fix. I hope this video was helpful to those of you wanting to get better at supports. This figure needs a very minimal amount of cleanup before he's ready to paint. If you're interested in commissioning my services contact me through my Etsy page. Follow my socials, like, share and subscribe, and I hope you guys have an awesome day.